be unto you from God our Father, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I greet you in Jesus' joy tonight. My name is Pastor Gerald Brandon. I am the senior pastor of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church in DeWitt, Virginia. I also serve as the second vice moderator for the Bethany Baptist Association of Southside Virginia. Under the leadership of of Dr. Larry Brown as our moderator. As most of you know by now, uh, our association typically have our association during this week. Uh, the leadership have opted out of having our association in the building, but still having our association virtually. In keeping with our association for the week. I'm going to be teaching tonight on the subject matter, leading your church through the pandemic. Most of the churches started in the South, um, started in what was called Bush Harbors. Bush Harbors were churches that were founded outside um, in the bushes. Um, some were founded in the bushes to keep the master from seeing or hearing what was going on in their worship experience. There were those churches that were started on plantations that the white master pastor would come in and conduct services from Sunday to Sunday. As God laid it on the hearts and the minds of men and women and called them into ministry, they began starting churches. With them starting churches, some of them were still under the supervision of their masters. As a child growing up, there were two cartoons that I enjoyed watching, which both cartoons in depicted family living. One was called the Flintstones and the other was called The Jetsons. Maybe you remember those shows. Um, the Flintstones was a prehistoric family who lived in uh, caveman times, quote unquote, who had a rock car that they would paddle their feet to get from one location to the other. Unlike the Jetsons, who were... Uh, a family that was way advanced. They had um, jets. They had spaceships that they were flying. Their homes were built on tall structures where their jets or their spaceships would land and everything was computerized. So much so that if you looked at both shows, they almost mirrored each other. The Flintstones had a dog that was a dinosaur, while the Jetsons had a dog that was computerized. Almost make us wonder if the church has become prehistoric, wherein are we still living in those days of the Flintstones, per se, instead of advancing towards the Jetson era? In 2020, from January to March, we were able to fellowship and worship in our sanctuaries. From April to the current time, we have not been able to worship even though the governor has given the okay to return back into our sanctuaries, most churches have opted not to return. So how then do we now worship um, in this pandemic era? The first thing that I want to impress on you tonight, the church is moving to a virtual church era. 
what is a virtual church, you ask. A virtual church is a service um, or a meeting of like mind individuals that is fully virtual. And what that simply means is it's online. It's broadcasted online. I find it helpful to use virtual um, to describe churches today because most of our churches are not able to meet in person. When the pandemic first hit, um, God led me to start doing um, drive-in churches. At the same time, going live on Facebook each Sunday. Because as we both know, we have people in our congregation with pre-existing ailments that cannot be around anyone. So what does virtual church look like? Well, there is many means of virtual churches. Um, some churches do um, conference call on Sunday and they have service over the conference call. There is a thing called Zoom. Zoom allows you to interact with each other like we are doing now virtually. Up to 100 people can be on the Zoom call at one time and you can enjoy seeing each other's faces, singing and worshiping together and the pastor can preach. A lot of pastors have opted opt to go to Facebook Live and preach sermons and teach Bible study on Facebook Live. Whatever means of virtual church that your church feels comfortable with will be a fit for your congregation. At the same time, in order to go virtual, you have to have internet service. And unfortunately, um, within our local association, there are a lot of rural areas that may not have um, internet service. However, most of our congregation have what we call a smartphone. And on the smartphone, you can download apps. You can go on YouTube. You can download Facebook. Whatever means that you would have to continue to keep in contact with one another. Um, Facebook Live is wonderful. Zoom is wonderful. But you have to do something that's geared close to your people. Within our congregation, not only do we do Facebook Live or Zoom um, Live, I decided um, that we would do what Jesus would do. We remember that in Jesus' lifetime, in his three years of ministry, majority of his ministry was done outside. <clears throat> so what we decided to do as a congregation was to do drive-bys. We would drive by our congregation, congregants' um, houses who were not able to come to church on Sunday, twice a month. We would pick three or four people. We would drive in a caravan of cars, pull up in their yard, blow the horn, wave at them, let them know that we are still thinking about them, even though they cannot be with us in the worship experience. We have members who have family members that cannot come and they come, they will call them on their phone and put their phone on speakerphone so they can listen in on the worship experience. This era is forcing us to come up with new and creative ways of doing church. And even as I'm teaching, to, teaching tonight, I'm using um, one means of talking to you while I'm looking at another means of communication. Um, we have to get to the place where we become comfortable. Maybe you're interested in doing outside church. How does that look? You're going to have to invest in 
an outside system or a system, sound system, where you can broadcast on your property of your church. What I've done was not only do we have a system outside, but we also have what's called an FM transmitter. An FM transmitter. This allows our congregants to sit in their cars with their windows up, with the AC running, and they can turn to a specific radio station and be able to listen to the worship experience. When I first began doing the outside church, the drive up church, drive in church, um, there were colleagues and there were friends who was concerned about my well-being, being outside in the elements. But I'm reminded that wherever Jesus went, he ministered. And majority of the time was outside. When he fed the 5,000, um, two fish, and five loaves of bread, they were outside. When he healed the woman with the issue of blood, the crowd had gathered around him she pressed her way to get to where Jesus was. They were outside. So virtual church, drive up church, drive in church, whichever terminology you want to use, is a means of continuous, continuing having that fellowship without um, getting close to one another. Now, not only can you have virtual church, you can have church via conference call, um, whichever suits the means of your congregation. I don't have an answer to a question of when are we going back into the church building? But I do have an answer to you for how does it look going back into the church building? I suggest to you that you would develop a re-entry team. This re-entry team will come up with ways of re-entering back into your um, local fellowship. Um, things such as questionnaires, um, asking questions about, have you been in contact with anyone with the coronavirus or have you had any symptoms of coronavirus, um, pre-existing medical conditions. Um, you might want to invest in thermometers to take temperatures of people entering into your church. Um, face masks uh, required. The church might want to invest in a few boxes of face masks. They can be found on Amazon. Um, cheaper than it, then you will find them in the local stores. You may want to invest in um, cleaning supplies. The church will have to be clean after every service. Just some creative ways of thinking. If we're going to lead and be successful through this pandemic, we're going to have to get to the place where we are no longer thinking in a small box but we are thinking outside the box. There are many congregations who have no plans of re-entering back into um, the building until they feel everything is safe. If that's your plan, then you, we have to think of a plan or you have to think of a plan on how to continue your fellowship. I found that this virtual church is working. Why do is this church working? Because virtually we are able to reach people that we may never see face to face. We're able to reach people from not only here in the state of Virginia, but all across this country and even across the world. People will tune in to YouTube. People will tune in to Facebook Live.
people will tune into Zoom because they can be in the comfort of their homes and enjoy the worship experience. When we look at leading our congregation, we cannot leave out our millennials, our Generation X, our babies. We have to come up with creative ways of including them in the worship experience. One way of including our young people in our um, fellowship, our virtual church, give them responsibility of maybe um, videotaping. Give them responsibility of helping edit the videos. Give them the responsibility of coming up with youth Bible studies that they can have together on. They have a website or, or a social media, excuse me, social media that love young people love called TikTok. A three minute Bible study on TikTok will draw your young people in. Maybe a little funny, um, but it will draw your young people in. Even your worship experience. Include them in your worship experience. Let them read the scriptures. Maybe even pray. Take up the offering. To make them still feel a part of your congregation. In this era that we're living in, our young people know more about virtual than some of us adults. They can teach us how to maneuver through this virtual era that we're in. They can guide you through ways of um, editing, ways of um, connecting to young people, connecting to older people, and still be relevant in your message, relevant in your worship experience. Young people gravitate to certain things. So you may have to poll your congregation and see what the likes and dislikes of your young people in your congregations are. Young people today, um, as young as four years old, <clears throat> excuse me, know how to access um, YouTube. They will spend hours looking at YouTube videos. So come up with a creative way of having a YouTube youth church. You may have to bring in uh, a young person, a youth leader, or a youth pastor to conduct the service, but something that will attract your young people. Be mindful also in this virtual church era that for most people, the first 15 minutes is what grabs their attention. If they don't have, if you don't have their attention in the first um, 15 minutes, then they're going to click and go to the next video. So what does that look like? You may have to cut out the tithes and the offerings from your video. You may have to cut out um, some of your announcements out of your video to shorten your video so that it draws the attention of the people who are watching. One of the biggest things that I've found in doing virtual church, especially on Facebook Live, is people will share your video. They will share your video, which will open up the opportunity for more people to enjoy your worship experience. Now, be, also be mindful when you do um, live screening or <clears throat> you do um, Facebook Live. If you're playing music from an artist, be sure to put in your inscriptions. We do not own the rights to this music. Facebook has what I would like to call Facebook police that will come in and stop your video because you're playing music that you don't own. My brothers and sisters, this is a new era. But even in this new era, God has not left us. 
I believe that we can make it through this pandemic if we keep God the center of everything we do. This era is forcing us to be outside, become outside the box. The reality is that our calling is to go ye therefore into all the nations, baptizing them. And oftentimes we get so hooked on the building that we forget our calling. Now we have to concentrate on our calling to reach those who are unchurched to reach those who may not know Jesus and the pardon of their sin, to reach those who may not enter the physical building. Now is the time that we win souls to Christ through this virtual age or through this virtual church age that we are living. So the final thing is, what is the future of the church? I believe that virtual church is going to continue. However, I believe that there will come a time when we'll be able to re-enter into our different um, churches again. However, it may not be church like it once was. We may not be able to sit side by side. We may not be able to uh, hug one another. We may not be able to come in the church without a face mask on. So we have to plan for our future. As we know now that in this era, this pandemic era, there is no solid concrete answers to what's going on. But I believe that God's word is true. And the Bible says this as I close. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, seek my face, then shall they hear from heaven and I will heal the land. My brothers and sisters, don't be discouraged, but be encouraged that God has not left us through this pandemic. And we can make it even through this pandemic, through this virtual gathering that we're having together. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.